Also in the queue menu under operations is the ability to add camera. For this, we'll actually set our frame range to about 2000 frames and I'll press home in order to get my timeline to show completely. And the interesting thing about add camera in hard ops is that it will basically point the camera at whatever you're looking at and use the 3D cursor as its placement. And whenever you drop it, it will just start turning. There's an F9 panel where you can choose to make it either a bounce camera where it will go a certain way and then come back kind of like a teeter-totter or you can turn that off and actually just make it just a regular camera that just turntables in perpetuity but it's built to use a driver to ensure that it connects with the first frame in addition to that it also adds a marker so if you have additional cameras in the scene and you add a hops camera you may want to delete the marker in order to ensure that you have the marker exactly where you want to in the timeline but to show why we have a marker we will just move it down a little bit to maybe something like this. And I'll place my 3D cursor here and I'm just gonna press Q and we're just gonna add camera. Notice that there's multiple places you can add camera. Add camera also shows up in the, what I call the null Q menu, the Q menu that shows up when nothing is selected, which is another easy way to just add cameras. I also wanna place my 3D cursor back so I can look at this from a good vantage point like right here. And then we can just go to another frame I'm going to shift place my cursor here and we're just going to press Q and under operations we see that we have an option here for add camera once again. So that's the original option. I just wanted to show all the different places that you can access it. And then at the very end here at this frame we'll actually look at it with the 3D cursor in the center but we'll look at it kind of frontally and I will press Alt V and we'll just choose to add a camera through the Alt V sub menu and finally at the end i will grab this timeline or grab this marker for the first camera and duplicate it so that whenever it, lo it loops back around to exactly where it started so if we just let our timeline play we've basically set up a series of cuts in this that will take place over the course of this very long timeline but Add camera was added because there was a period of time where I was just adding a lot of cameras and I was putting drivers on empties in order to show off these models and it just became apparent that we could probably automate the empty camera adding process to make it where users could just make turntables and showcase their models very easily. And then over time it also became apparent that we may want to do additional cuts and maybe reposition the camera in special places. Um, there was a topo study video I did that's also in one of the playlists that I was moving around solving a cube that was actually in motion. So this idea came about from that one as a way that we could probably manually position cameras on a specific region while also doing a turntable for people that maybe want to do movement studies that are in motion. It's just a fun way to just have some fun with Blender, you know. Once you have, I'm hoping that once users have an understanding of the tools, they're able to get in here and have fun with me, uh, kind of the same way that I do, because I mean, it is a regimen for me to just wake up, get in here, cut a box, go to Box City, and then just um, set up a quick render, push it out to Twitter, and then from there actually get to my real work that I don't even bother with posting or talking about anymore, because uh, it's just tool test to me at this point. But for the most part, add cameras there to just help you get a seamless camera turntable transition to just show off your models for whoever you may need to show them to.